All right. Yep, we are live. So I am here with Justin Co from That Christian Vlogger. He has amassed almost 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. And so we asked him to just pop on Facebook Live, share a little bit of his insights, and hopefully answer your questions and inspire you for your own personal digital ministry. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's a little rainy, a little cold out here in the Northwest, but things are going very well. Probably not as cold as where you're at right now. Yeah, it's freezing. <laughs> Bring I'm, glad, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about how you started with that Christian vlogger and what is your mission? Yeah, so the way that I started doing this is I've actually been doing ministry now for this is my 11th year of ministry, been doing a lot of other types of ministry before this, uh, things like literature evangelism, uh, preaching evangelistic crusades, teaching, uh, you know, different types of discipleship programs, Bible working, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I always really poured my heart into it because I always believe that the message can change people's lives, that even if you can give the message to just one person, uh, at a time, it, it's very, very, very valuable. It can change someone's lives. It can change their entire destiny, their eternity. And so I've always thrown myself behind how can I use what God has given me to be able to get that message out there. And sometimes that means knocking on 100 doors a day. Sometimes that means preparing the best lesson plan that I can at school or preparing mm -hmm. a sermon for church. And, it, and it's always been good. And it's always been in relatively small numbers. Um, but then I had an experience back in Philadelphia a couple of years ago where I was teaching at a school. I had a student named Michael who shared his story with me. He was raised in kind of a nominally Christian home in Pennsylvania and kind of was very like lukewarm with how he would think about spiritual things. And then uh, somehow online, he met this guy across the country on YouTube who was making videos kind of describing his faith journey and kind of his mm -hmm. views on life. Mm -hmm. And that experience led him to faith in Christ. It was because of those videos that he decided, you know what, I'm going to become a Christian myself. I'm going to give my heart to Jesus. And I had the opportunity of working with him and hearing his story. And I was just thinking, man, that is, that is so incredibly cool. That is so powerful that someone from an entirely different part of the country could have an impact on Michael's life. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow, what would that look like if we try to modernize that and put that into, into a contemporary context? And when we think about this, this is nothing new. This is literally how the church spread in the early days. Mm -hmm. You think about someone like Paul. Paul was not able to go and preach in person everywhere at all times. And so he utilized what was considered social media of the day, which was writing down a letter and sending it to churches. Mm -hmm. And then his voice would be amplified in many different locations. And we still are reaping the benefits of, uh, of Paul's ministry even today. And so I realized, wow, if we were to do things like that today, what would it look mm -hmm. like if Jesus was trying to spread a message or if Paul was trying to spread a message today? Mm -hmm. I believe that he would use social media. I believe that he might even consider using something like YouTube. And so I started making videos saying, hey, if it's worth it for a, a class of 12 students, if it's worth preaching to 50 people mm -hmm. on, uh, at, at a church, why wouldn't it be more worth it for mm -hmm. the same message to go out to potentially hundreds, if not thousands, if not even more people per video. And so that's kind of where I started with that desire of spreading the message. That's really inspiring. And, you know, I, I personally believe that the next great awakening will be a digital one. We have the ability to preach and teach, you know, the gospel message mm -hmm. to the world. And so that's really exciting. I'm really glad you're doing that. So a lot of people might be watching this going, okay, that's great. But did you have all the skills necessary already? Or how did you, how did you get the skills necessary to make this project as successful as it is today? No, absolutely not. I, that, the skills for videoing, for editing, graphic work, marketing even, were, were never things that I had to, to begin with. I was a teacher, mostly at heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I enjoyed communication. But uh, all the technical things, those are things that I never had. I didn't buy my first camera until, you know, right around this time frame. And so um, this was a brand new journey for me. But, you know, I figured, you know, I, it, the, the concept at least was worth exploring, this idea of communication at large through social media. And so mm -hmm. I made a commitment one year, uh, right around New Year's, uh, saying, that, you know what, I'll do one video every single week for an entire year, 52 mm -hmm. videos in a, in a year. And if it goes somewhere great. If it doesn't go anywhere, 
then I'll just kill it. And, and, and it's no big deal. And I, the way I looked at it as I was like, you know, if I'm going to plant a church, how, how amazing of a success would that church plant be? If at the end of 12 months, there were say 250 people engaged, mm-hmm. actively engaged mm-hmm. with the community. I was mm-hmm. like, man, that would be a, a, a huge success. And so mm-hmm. the way I, I, I was kind of setting my goals for, I said in under one year, if I can amass a, a community, uh, a subscriber base of 250 people, then, then my efforts would be worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went out and did it and, and I kind of had to learn the technical pieces uh, mm-hmm. as I went. And I'm, I'm still no expert at that. So I, you know, mm-hmm. anyone who's watching this live or on the replay, hello, by the way, um, um, you, you probably have more technical experience than I do. I, I'm not a great video editor, not a great cinematographer, any of that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to use what's, at, what's readily available right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think you do it in a very authentic way. Like I, I feel that uh, online audiences can be a little bit forgiving if things aren't perfect because mm-hmm. what they're really searching for is that message. And I think that's really inspiring. So how many years ago did this start? Um, I just crossed the two year mark uh, last month or two months ago. So two years and a little bit of change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, very good. So how did you, it sounds weird. We talk sometimes about online personalities and personas. How did you develop your persona or is it really just you? No, there's no persona. Uh, it, it, it's me for better or worse. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that the whole concept of trying to put on like a fake self is so exhausting. It's, mm-hmm. it's already hard enough just to kind of create content as it is. So Mm-hmm. Um, it is me for, for all, you know, if it's, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it means that I just show up every day and, and I talk and yeah. whatever comes out, yeah. comes out, I guess. Yeah. And for those of us who know you in person, we know that the Justin Co that we see on that Christian blogger is the real Justin Co. And I think that speaks to audiences right now. We have a generation that's kind of pushing against that veneer of, you know, perfection and like everything's you know, super produced and everything's just perfect. Like they know it's not real. And so when you have someone like you, who's so engaging and so genuine, I, I think, you know, that's how you have amassed such a following because people know that you're just speaking from the heart. Um, having said that, what has been your biggest challenge? Biggest challenge, I would say it's probably in the, in the realm of consistency and um, discouragement. You know, this is uh, in many ways a difficult field of ministry. Uh, mm-hmm. And I look at it kind of like you would view like mission work o- overseas. Mm-hmm. You know, you go I have some friends that are going to be uh, going internationally with um, what's the organization AFM. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they are spending 10 years, you know, of their life going abroad, learning the language, learning about the customs and and really just trying to make a difference in people's lives. You know, when you do something like that, you have to take a long term approach. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have to be ready for discouraging moments, for setbacks Mm -hmm. and for challenges. And you have to show up every single day. And Mm -hmm. the same thing is true of social media ministry, in my opinion. There's a lot of discouragement. The discouragement is definitely different. Uh, I'm not trying to equate, you know, the types of things that I experienced with, you know, missionaries in the jungle or wherever. Mm -hmm. Um, Each one's a little bit different. But, you know, the the struggles of like, man, is is my message getting out there? Am I reaching anybody? Are they understanding what I'm saying? You know, all that kind of stuff. It it, it can be very discouraging. Um, But the biggest thing that you have to do is show up every single week or however long, however often you've committed to doing it. And so I think that's really the challenge is. I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that shows up um, day after day after day. I, I like like launching things. I like visioning. Yeah. I like the big picture. It's mm-hmm. the details. It's the nitty gritty that I'm really not great at. And so this has been a learning experience for me, yeah. trying to grow in areas that I'm weak in um, and, and trying to show up every single week and, and be consistent and make more and more videos. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so you have, I just looked the other day, you have nearly 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, I should be passing 50,000 in the next day or two. Yeah, so you're going to be, that's that's 50,000 people who are engaged and actively watching your content. How did you do it? Or, you know, where did you start? Like, how did you, how did you get traction? 
Well, uh, it, it really helps. Uh, kind of going back to that consistency point, that's really like the bedrock. Like, mm-hmm. uh, that's like, that's the price that you have to pay. Like, it's not through any single one video. It's not like hit mm-hmm. a viral video. Even if you, even if you got a viral video and got millions of views, theoretically, they're not going to subscribe if you don't have like a library of contents to come behind. So it really comes down uh, to that consistency and, mm-hmm. and working hard. Uh, and I think that that makes a, a big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also beyond that, it, it's, it's trying to understand the platform and, and YouTube mm-hmm. really is uh, its own beast. YouTube is different than, as mm-hmm. I mean, obviously everyone here knows this. YouTube is different than Facebook, different mm-hmm. than Instagram, different than Snapchat. It's even different than Vimeo in how people use it. And so you got to mm-hmm. understand the platform as it is and really just um, pay your respects to the platform. And so what that means, practically speaking, is that YouTube is a search engine. That is Mm -hmm. many people when they interact with life and they have a question, I don't know how to change my oil. I don't know how to do this. In fact, fact, just uh, this last weekend, I was uh, at a wedding and I didn't know how to buff my shoes, or at least I didn't know how Mm -hmm. properly to do it. So I literally just went on YouTube, how to buff shoes, black enter. And that's how a lot of people uh, treat YouTube. It's a search engine. It's a kind of a Q and a forum. And so the way that I, built my YouTube channel was I'm going to try and focus on some of the questions that people are asking in the areas of Christian living and Bible study and things like that. And by doing that, people were able to find the videos that I were creating. And, you know, over time, a percentage of a percentage of them really enjoy the answers that I'm giving my perspective. Uh, Mm -hmm. They kind of buy into the whole community feel of that. And over time, that tribe definitely does grow. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not trying to create competition for you, but if you really look at the top searched um, questions in Google and all these other sites as people, millions of people every year are Googling for God. They're asking questions like what happens when we yeah. die? Is God real? Why is there suffering? And so ministries like yours are, are really seeking to take those top questions and answer them and then you're providing all this additional content and stuff well and so that's something i think people who are aspiring to be digital evangelists or disciples they can really think about what are the questions that people are searching for online and then they can try and provide answers to those questions absolutely absolutely no that's very good so what words of advice would you give yourself two years ago? Like if you could speak to your younger self, I know you haven't been doing this forever, but if you could speak Mm -hmm. to your younger self, what would you say? Hmm. (laughs) What would I say? Uh, Be patient uh, is is a huge one. I'm not naturally a patient person. And uh, I think this kind of type of ministry definitely exacerbates that challenge. It's something I'm actually even telling myself today. Like I'm getting increasingly impatient even presently. I got to remind myself like, Hey, this is something for the long term. This is something that's not just going to be blowing up overnight. It's something that you really got to be patient with. And so I think Mm -hmm. focusing on just doing a good job with what is in front of you. Don't Mm -hmm. worry about the next six months, worry about the next week or two and Mm -hmm. and just do a good job with what's in front of you and then be patient with the results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what inspires you to keep going? What inspires? um, I see what um, this channel and other channels and other ministries like this, whether it's on different platforms, I view this as the next evolution of the church. Mm -hmm. Um, I really do. I'm not trying to say that the church needs to go away or that we should stop meeting every weekend or any of that kind of stuff. But I'm just saying that the world would be a better place if there were more great digital missionaries out there. I believe, Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, if you're trying to reach a generation and they're only Mm -hmm. exposed to the message or content or just the Christian way of life in general, let's say once a week uh, Mm -hmm. on the weekends, you're going to have only a a small percentage of impact. But if you can somehow get that young person or that older person uh, to be engaged with the same type of thing, two Mm -hmm. or three or five or theoretically every single day of the week, I believe that that will actually like give us much greater growth and much uh, better spiritual development as mm-hmm. individuals. And so um, really what keeps me going through discouragement, through setbacks and challenges is really just this belief and this faith that what I'm doing or what I'm a part of 
is going to make a huge difference in the future. I think about how the printing press dramatically changed uh, society at large, but certainly changed the church in general. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it's any mistake that the, the one, that the first book printed on the press was the Bible. That's, you know, the, the expansion of Protestantism, for example, or even Adventism in specific, mm-hmm. was largely off the backs of people passing out literature door to door to door to door. And I think about that, like nothing has changed uh, history nearly as much as the Gutenberg press and that kind of technological advance that took place. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that what we're witnessing today is even a greater impact on society and culture and religion, even in church than the printing press was. And so I'm, I'm determined to be part of the solution and to be part of that cutting edge, as opposed to kind of just only reminiscing about the way things used to be, because, you know, things aren't always going to be the way things used to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's great. And I was reading uh, just some numbers, going through some numbers and some stats this week and millennials spend 40 to 45 hours a week watching videos that is predominantly online. So, mm-hmm. th- you know, video is king right now. We know that on social media and we actually have, speaking of video on social media, we have quite a few people watching and we have a question from Carl. So, Hi, Carl. And Carl's asking, what kind of research and planning do you go through before you record each video? That's a great question. And that kind of uh, is, is a great follow-up to the whole paradigm of YouTube being a search engine. So there is a science behind it that's very important. Um, some low-hanging fruits, easy things that you could do is um, just typing in the YouTube search bar um, and, and paying attention to what phrases it auto-completes. There's a reason why those phrases are there. It's because people are searching for those questions. Mm -hmm. So if you can position your content to reflect the autocomplete suggestions on YouTube, you're going to be in a better position for people finding your video uh, organically. Um, I I, I, I guess I have to do like a shameless plug. I did do a course, like it's like a 14 part video course Mm -hmm. teaching people how to do exactly this from start to finish from, I have zero ideas all the way to researching how best to communicate it, the structuring of a video, the gear that you might want, and then all the Mm -hmm. science behind getting that video in front of someone and uploading and posting it. I do have that course available at um, that Christian or shop.thatchristianvlogger.com if you're interested, or you can message me personally after the live stream or something like that. But the- the, 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 Message me and I will actually add it to the video. Oh, perfect. There you go. Uh, But yeah, the the short answer is uh, autocomplete suggestions is a really great place to start. Yeah, that's, that's very clever. So the next question is, does the impact of YouTube or other social media platforms depend to a degree on the age of the presenter? So does your age- have an impact on the success of what you're trying to do as far as people connecting with you, I think is what he's asking. I I would say it would be naive to say no. I I would say obviously to some extent uh, you're going to, you're going to relate better with people who are in a similar age group. But Mm -hmm. you know, if you're older than I am, that's not a negative necessarily. That just means that you have the ability to reach people who look and maybe sound and and, uh, similar to you. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that's a good thing as well, because I'm not going to be able to reach the people that you might be able to reach. So yes, my audience does tend to skew on the younger end of things. Uh, you know, 80% of my audience is under the age of 34, which is right around where I'm at. Uh, mm-hmm. But I do have some outliers of people who are senior citizens who watch my videos. So mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that I can't reach older people necessarily. And it doesn't mean that if you're older, you can't reach younger people to give you an example Literally, as I was on my way to the office today, I was listening to a podcast by Rick Warren. Some of you guys might like him. Some of you guys might not. But the point is, he is not a millennial. He's not a young person. And I'm listening to him because I find his value, his his content to be inspirational and valuable. So if you have good content, if you have good messaging, then I think when people find you, if, if, if it, the merits, if your contents stand on its own merits, they're, they're going to not be worried about how old you are. In fact, a lot of the people that I listen to have to be much older than myself because I get great mm-hmm. content from them. So um, yeah, it, it does kind of relate to who you are and your demographic, but it's not limited to that. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So what is next for that Christian vlogger? Like what, what do you want to do in the future? Where do you want to tap into? 
Yeah. So one of my biggest desires is to use kind of the skills and the knowledge that I've been acquiring these last couple of years Mm -hmm. and to really leverage that for churches, for ministries, for conferences, for unions, really, and to kind of get the message out there even more. I would Mm -hmm. love to at some points in the future to build a team around this where they can not only help produce kind of like my own content with with talented videographers and writers and graphic designers, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But I'd really like to kind of leverage my experience and and help other people do the same thing. Um, I I don't want to be the only voice out there. I would love to see more people, more ministries out there uh, spreading their message online. Yeah, absolutely. And I I have to say like this department at the North American division, social media and big data, it was started almost two years ago and it was pretty lonely two years ago, but I think it's changing. I mean, this is just anecdotal, but I'm meeting more and more people who are out there engaging in, you know, technology to reach people and share the gospel. And it's very encouraging and it's very exciting what people are doing. So I think, I think we're at just a very exciting beginning point where I'm hoping in the next year or so it absolutely explodes. But oftentimes when I go and I speak and I try and, you know, teach people and inspire them, I get this question a lot. And that is, does it work? Does it really work to reach people in this way? And you know, maybe it's because it's the generational gap and they're, they're older. And so they just can't, um, they, they just don't view things the way the younger generation does where, yeah, I'll connect with someone online and do Bible studies. So do you have any testimonies or any stories? I mean, I know you started what, with one, but does it work? Is the yeah, question. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It works. Um, I mean, it's, it's literally no different than Paul writing a letter to the church at Ephesus. It's, it's literally no different. Mm-hmm. He wrote something that would took up maybe what, four or five chapters or pages or whatever the case is, mm-hmm. send it to someone. Did mm-hmm. that change lives? Yeah, absolutely. It did. Clearly it did. Um, mm-hmm. So why wouldn't it change? I, um, a lot of us in, in, in our denomination, we're familiar with things like glow tracks. You know, it's just a small little piece of paper. Is that worth it? Does that change lives? Yeah, absolutely. It does. Uh, I'll give you kind of a more contemporary example. Last night, my wife and I were watching the movie that just came out. Um, I can only um, imagine. I can only imagine, mm-hmm. which was incredible. It was a great movie, by the way. I'd, I'd recommend that you check it out if you're into the whole, you know, inspirational films kind of a thing. But mm-hmm. in the story, uh, the, the main character, he has an abusive father. Mm-hmm. Um, and the abusive father never stepped foot into a church for, for a long time. He was he was, you know, really estranged from, from Christianity, from the church community, from God, really. Um, he turned on the radio one day, listening to his son sing at the local church mm. and decided to leave the radio on when the pastor was speaking afterwards. Mm-hmm. It, and that message changed the father's life. Does it matter if they're physically in the room or if mm. they're reading it on a book, or the same mm. manuscript, or if they're watching it, you know, on a video a thousand miles away, or if mm-hmm. they're, you know, listening to an audio broadcast of the sermon, it's mm-hmm. literally no different. The message is the message. And so, yes, it, it works. It, it, it makes a huge difference in young people's lives. Literally this morning, I'm, I'm going back and forth on Instagram right now with a couple of young people who watched some of my Christian dating advice series that I did last mm-hmm. week or last month. And this person is asking me about, you know, this breakup that they're going through you know, is it, is it, is God really leading to the, what, what do we do in, in, in heartache and, and in difficult moments like that? Is God really there? I thought God was leading. What do I do? And so here I am in the inmost, most, like the most intimate details of a young person's life. You think about this. When, when you ask a young person about their day, how was your day? Fine. Like mm-hmm. they don't want to open up to you, mm-hmm. but here I am having young people opening up to me in the most difficult moments of their experience the most Mm -hmm. intimate details of their life. And they're relating with me. And I'm having an ongoing conversation with many of these people because of videos that I've made. I've never met these people. I don't even know what they look like. They're just on the other side of the world as far as I know. Mm -hmm. But I'm being able to connect with them because of this digital ministry. Now, does it work for every person? Does it mean that every single one of them is Mm -hmm. impacting that way? No, of course not. You know, you preach a sermon on, on the weekend and, you know, there's a percentage of people that fall asleep during the sermon. There's a mm-hmm. percentage of people who aren't paying attention, who are, who are mm-hmm. texting throughout the message, but mm-hmm. you're going to reach some people. And mm-hmm. that's what I really try to focus on. I don't want to focus on the negatives. I want to focus on where God is at work. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and when I'm online making videos, I, I see God at work quite often. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think it's also our obligation to plant those seeds. And in some ways, you know, the Holy Spirit helps and facilitates. And we sometimes we may never know the full impact of what we're doing. And at least, you know, right now, one of the things um, that I often run into is a lot of the stories coming back, they're antidotal. I know this because we have another youth ministry where there's this confidential Q and A and they're, they're constantly answering questions and they're engaging with these young girls, but that right now there's no system for follow up five years down the line. But I can tell you time and time and again, I hear these testimonies. I hear these stories of people who found out that way. And one of the challenges I always put out there is like, you know, online dating has been normalized. So if you can meet your future spouse online, why can't you meet God? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, sometimes that, that gets people to, to stop and think a little bit. Um, so we have another question. And this one is, if you're starting out on YouTube and you had to pick a single focus, what would you choose? Consistency or quality? That's a great question. I think it really depends. Ideally, both. Um, but if I had to lean towards one, because this is what I did with my experience, it was consistency. Yeah. Um, you know, 52 videos is 52 opportunities. I'm saying 52 because one a year, one a week for a year are 52 opportunities to change someone's life. But it's also mm -hmm. 52 opportunities for someone to find your content. You mm -hmm. made one video. That's great. Um, you only have one chance to find someone. You only have one chance to reach someone. Now, with that said, there obviously is a, a good balance. A lot of you guys have maybe heard of the YouTube channel called The Bible Project. Mm -hmm. They make incredibly high quality videos. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm guessing that those videos cost multiple thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars per video uh, in the research and the writing and the animation that takes place. And they're mm -hmm. like, they've blown up. Like they are a huge channel on, on YouTube and they're reaching millions of people. Mm -hmm. I don't have the ability to do that. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to focus on what I can do. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the answer is it's some blend of the two, uh, you know, maybe the highest quality video that you can do consistently mm -hmm. um, is probably the best answer. But if I had to like pick one or two, I'd, I'd, I'd go with consistency. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And going back to your, your point of you're just doing what you can do. The amazing thing about the digital age is that it has lowered the bar to entry Oh yeah. So to be, to get on TV or radio or publish a book, you had to have a, a large funding source or, you know, the right, right. courses in the network. Nowadays, literally all of us could, are publishers. Like if you're posting on social media, you're a publisher. If you're creating video content, then you're a video personality. Like, so we all have an opportunity to do it in a way the best that we can. And of course, yeah. you know, you know, here's a shameless plug. If you visit our website, sdadata.org, we have a lot of resources on that website to help you do it better and effectively. Um, but, you know, as you said before, just Keep posting, keep trying, keep at it because you, it might be just that one. I know of someone who did the whole door knocking thing and in real life and, you know, doors would shut, doors would shut, doors would shut. And then he um, opened the, got a door opened and he sat down and started doing Bible studies with someone. And that person is now a pretty big figure in our church as an evangelist, as a pastor, and he has reached probably thousands of people while this one door knocker, maybe he's the only big fish he'll ever, you know, catch. But sometimes it's only that one, that one opportunity um, that, you know, that divine appointment that God is setting up that can be so amazing. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. Okay, um, I, I was going to mention, like, I mean, I agree with you. Like quality has never been less important than today. It's also never been more important than today. So it's kind of like two truths on different sides of the coin. But mm -hmm. think about like, if you guys remember like the viral video of Chewbacca mom, this yeah. lady sitting in her, in her car outside of Target or whatever, bought a Chewbacca yeah. mask and she's literally filming herself with her phone, reached millions of people. Now that might not be the message that we as Christians really want to put yeah. out there. Like that's not what we're rallying behind, but mm -hmm. it just goes to show you that no one cared that it wasn't a high budget production. They just mm -hmm. loved watching what you put out there. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so in, in one respect, quality doesn't even matter at all. As long as you're out there meeting someone's needs, whether the needs mm -hmm. are information, inspiration, education, entertainment, mm -hmm. like whatever it is, 
like if you're meeting that need, people don't mind. Yeah. And there's a lot of tools to do that now. Like we're using Zoom right now. I mean, we're even, I have another ministry that I'm working with. We're experimenting with Snapchat and using that for creating stories and doing Bible studies. Be creative. Just try different things. I'm going to ask one more question from sure. the people watching and then we'll close out for the day. So this is again from Kevin. So thank you, Kevin, for being so engaged and asking questions. Um, otherwise it would just be me talking to Justin and it's more interesting. <laughs> so what are some legitimate metrics of success for digital ministry? And he also asks, are they objective or subjective? And I'll let you answer first and then I'll chime in as well. What are, what are some metrics for success? Yes, metrics for success. Hmm. The way that I would challenge you to look at it is how much time do you have to put into this in order to reach people? Um, if it's something that you know, it's going to take you 15 hours to do uh, and you reach two people, maybe that's not worth it. Maybe you could spend those 15 hours better in some other mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But the way that I would start, and this is, it's convenient because many of you guys listening or participating in this video um, mm -hmm. are members of ministries or churches, mm -hmm. or you're mm -hmm. already yourself a pastor or an evangelist or something along those lines. So what my point is, is you've already gone through all the hard work of writing your contents, writing a sermon, writing a, a, a devotional or whatever the case is. You've already done all that heavy lifting. And even if you never upload a video, you're already going to be doing that hard work anyways. And so what the channel started off for me initially as, and it, it is in, in many respects, it still is uh, to varying levels, was simply a video reflection of my devotional time. In fact, it actually helped because, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, you need to be um, journaling or whatever the case is. That's a really great spiritual discipline. And I've bought probably like 20 different notebooks, never making it past page five every single time. And it just, mm -hmm. the, it, it wasn't something that I could do consistently or well. Um, but when I started to, to look at the YouTube channel as a reflection of my spiritual journey, I was like, man, this, this is actually kind of cool. This, it, it caused me to lean in rather than lean back. And so yeah. what happened was, is I was making videos about the stuff that I was already studying or I was teaching or the message I heard on the weekend. And so mm -hmm. in a certain respect, it didn't require a lot of extra time because I was already going through those thoughts. And so that's the way I would challenge you to look at it, Kevin. Uh, I know that you, uh, you are a pastor. You're already writing contents. You're, you're, al you're already putting all this kind of stuff out. How much time would it take you to sit down turn the camera on, record a, you know, a couple minutes thoughts and then edit it. It's probably going to take longer than most people think. It's probably going to take a few hours, especially if you're beginning. Um, mm -hmm. But if it reaches an, an additional 20 or 30 people, is it worth it? Because it might get, you know, 20, 30 views at the beginning when you're first starting off. Mm -hmm. Would you put that same amount of time if you could get 20 young people to sit in a room to listen to you talk? If that, if, if you can, if you would rather, then I think it's still worth the effort. And that's why I think digital is so powerful. It's because how hard is it to get 20 young people to sit in a room all together on any given time of the week? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very difficult to get them to show up. Scheduling, interest, you know, location, all that kind of stuff is very tough. It's not that hard to do that digitally. Mm -hmm. um, and so what do you do for success? I, I think you, you weigh how much time you're putting into it versus the impact. And obviously realizing that the more time you put into it, the more consistent you are, theoretically, at least the impact could be larger and larger and larger. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it is a subjective bar of success. What, what is success to me today is different than what it was to me a couple years ago, as far as the success mm -hmm. of a video. If I only get uh, you know, 500 views on a video today, I'm like, man, that video must have really tanked. No one must have been interested in it. Like yeah. I must have done something wrong. Whereas mm -hmm. Two years ago, if I got 500 views, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's blowing up. Like I never expected mm -hmm. this kind of success. So it is subjective, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is subjective. Um, if he's looking for objective metrics, then again, it kind of depends on where you are. If you're just starting and you do a video and you get 20 shares and you know 10 likes and people are commenting and they're actually watching it, that's a success because you're starting from zero. Yeah. And one of the ways that you can track whether or not it's getting traction is, of course, 
just the numbers wise, like how many people are you reaching? Are they watching the videos? If you have a click through to your website and you have Google Analytics installed, are you getting traction to your website? Are they spending time on your website? Are they engaged? Are they commenting? Are they sharing? Those are the metrics for success. And then over time, you can track growth. Um, so, so yeah, it kind of depends. And one of the things too is when we're, we don't really know something or understand something until we have to teach it to someone else. This is a, you know, principle that was instilled in me a long time ago that if you don't really understand something until you can articulate it to someone else. And I think that that's what's happening with you and a lot of these other digital disciples that I see popping up is they're starting to share their spiritual reflections online um, and it helps solidify it in your mind, but it also is sharing your thoughts with others. And you might not ever know the impact. Um, and just as kind of an anecdotal story, I, to help with another ministry, so at, you know, 35, 36 years old, I'm not quite the Snapchat demographic, but I'm going to help another ministry understand how to leverage Snapchat for ministry. I've started playing with it and experimenting with it. And I was like, how can I use Snapchat for purpose? And so just for fun, I started putting together little Snapchat like videos, just really just for myself. And I posted them on my Facebook page because I really don't have any shame and I'm not even really that great behind video, but I was just experimenting, you know, experimenting. And what really shocked me is it's never going to go anywhere because I'm very private on my Facebook, but the people who do see it, my friends, they're sending me messages. They're like, I love this. They stop me in the hallway. They're like, your message really impacted me. And I might be only reaching probably like five people. But the point is, is, is they like it and they're responding to it. And like one woman told me, oh, my daughter just loves your videos. And it's, it's just a, you know, you don't have to reach the world with your digital ministry. You might be just reaching your friends and you never know in your own friend network who is struggling in their faith, mm -hmm. who is, who's mm -hmm. watching your videos. And you might be surprised, like on Snapchat, you can see who viewed your video. And I've been surprised to see some of my friends who I never thought would be interested in that kind of stuff. I've noticed they've started watching every single video I post. And that to me is, they might not be ready to talk about it, but at least they're interested enough in me yeah. to watch me share about my faith. And that, and that is something, and I'm never going to be a Justin Co. And that's perfectly fine with me, but we can all do something. And that is where I think digital media has really leveled the playing field. Yeah. We can all be digital disciples. So, Some, something that's really, uh, you, you mentioned on, as far as the analytics is really helpful, actually. Uh, I, I find that it can actually help your in-person ministry as well by paying attention to the analytics. Because mm -hmm. when you preach at a school or at a church, aside from maybe your wife or your partner or something along those lines uh, of them saying, hey, yeah, the message was good or the message was bad or do this differently yeah. or do that better. Mm -hmm. You have very little reliable voices telling you how you can get better and how you can improve mm -hmm. you're going to have the you know the elders of the church saying oh good job that was so encouraging but mm -hmm. was it really like i don't know like you know I, I don't know how much i can trust the saints in that moment they're just probably being yeah. affirming or or maybe if i did a bad job they wouldn't actually say anything i don't know mm -hmm. but when you put a video out there the numbers don't lie no yeah. one's going to watch a video that they're not interested in the mm -hmm. moment that it's no longer serving a value they click away and so what you can do is as you're presenting your content you can pay attention to things like watch time. You can find out literally at, oh, at, at one minute and 37 seconds, I lost 10% of my audience. Why was that? Well, it's probably because of this reason or that, or you were rambling on. And so you can literally, like you can fine tune your presentation styles. You can fine tune your delivery and, and your, 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 your just, I guess the graphics or like whatever it is, you can, you can look at those things through the eyes of analytics and can actually make you better of a presenter to make you a more effective communicator, at least digitally. And I think it actually applies online as well. So you can find out, Hey, you know what, even though when I gave this message at church, no one had any complaints and I get it online. And I see in the first 30 seconds, everyone drops off. They're, they're not interested in what I'm talking about. The content, the subject matter was not engaging. Maybe it's not worth doing an eight part series at my church on that, on that content because no one seems to care about it. 
Mm-hmm. No, I think that's an excellent point. So do you have any last minute thoughts before we bring this to a close? Yeah, for sure. If any of you guys are having more questions or curious about this, reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you guys about that. If you're an individual pastor or anything else like that, I'd love to kind of work through these things with you. Um, if you work at a conference or union or anything else like that, I would love to, to see how we could apply this at a more meta level. But my general encouragement is, guys, we need to be doing this. Like It is long past the time where it was like cutting edge to be on social Many yeah. of you guys who are around our age, you're like, yeah, I mean, of course we, we get this. If you're in the older generation, mm-hmm. like maybe you're still unsure about this, but like, I'm telling you never before have we had the ability to communicate with billions of people through the push of one single button. It's, mm-hmm. it's incredible. Never before have we been able to actually fulfill the gospel commission of getting the gospel to the entire world. You can literally do that through mm-hmm. social. You can literally do that through digital ministry. And so I want to really challenge us to, to, to be good stewards of the technology that God has placed at our disposal. Mm-hmm. It would be very, very uh, 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 misguided to see something like the printing press and say, oh, you know what? They're printing all kinds of evil fiction books or they're printing yeah. sexual content or deviant material. Therefore, the church should not use the printing press. It would be foolish to say the same thing with radio or TV, like, oh, there's so much bad content out there. Therefore, we should not engage and not provide Mm -hmm. any solutions to the problem. Mm -hmm. And yet when it comes to social, when it comes to digital, that seems to be the response is, oh, it's not worth it. Or, oh, you know, there's so much other crap that's out there, which I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But are we going to complain about it or are we going to be part of the solution? Are Mm -hmm. we going to go and meet people where they are, as Jesus told us? Are we going to follow Christ's method alone of mingling with people where they're at and winning their confidence? Or are we just going to allow Satan to just run rampant wherever he wants? And, and, and as far as for me, I'm wanting to be a part of that solution. That's kind of something I mentioned earlier. And I want to challenge some of you guys who are listening here today as well. Some of you listening, God is calling you to do this. God, I believe, is raising up a 